Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's Friday Morning Ramblings is all about tomatoes. So we're gonna walk through, I'm gonna highlight my tomato plants, give you some tips on those, and we'll see what's going on in the garden. I like coming out early in the morning. I tied up a lot of my plants, the tomato plants, prune them, I'll feed them later. It's just a good time to do it. Did some weeding and stuff like that. This is gonna be a tomato hedge. And when I talk about sprays, number one, always test spray, no matter what, a uh, spray recipe you find, find, test spray some leaves of the plants you're going to spray on, wait 48 hours, look for damage. But when I talk about sprays, just check on my channel, look up hydrogen peroxide spray. That's what I'm going to be using on these tomato plants and I'm building a tomato hedge. These are really planted closely together, um, different cherry tomatoes, one larger tomato, but this is going to be a cherry tomato hedge. So what I'm doing is planting them closely together. I'm going to bottom prune for airflow. That's what I've been kind of removing the bottom leaves. These are just getting bigger. And I'm just going to send them up a stake. It's going to be a dense planting, but it's going to be a wall of cherry tomatoes all taken care of with hydrogen peroxide spray. It works really, really well. And I just want to show you, removing the bottom leaves. This plant's nice and straight. You want to tie them up pretty quickly before they fall over because this one fell over and you can see how it's all bent because they want to reach for the sun so when it fell over that way the stem the leaves all pointed up to the sun that will correct itself but it's a little harder to tie up if you wait nice and straight that one's a little bent but again this is going to be a tomato hedge and that means I'm giving them a lot of space on the right and on the left but they're densely or more closely planted together. And hydrogen peroxide spray will take care of the early blight that I get in my area. We're gonna walk into the garden in a second. This is where I'm growing five heirloom tomatoes, larger tomatoes. I will link the video. I, I did a single stem pruning and highlighted these. So these again are really, are planted really closely together, but I'm keeping them a single stem. You can see that single stem coming up and I remove the suckers at each joint. So I will get less tomatoes, but overall in a small space, I'll get five different tomatoes and a quantity will be just as good as if I just put in one tomato plant or two tomato plant here and didn't single stem prune it. The reason you prune your tomato plants is just to manage the size. Every little sucker, that's a sucker that will come out only because I want this to, again, be single stem. But this will turn into a production stem. It will flower, produce fruit, and it will just continue to go, and then that will branch off. So you're just pruning to control size. So instead of planting one or two tomato plants in here, I'm doing five, pruning them pretty uh, harshly to a single stem, and I'll get five different tomatoes coming out of this space. We're... Uh, coming towards the last week of June. So now's really the time to yank everything out. All my arugula, cilantro is coming out. The peas will be coming out today. And just get rid of them. It's hard, I know, because you want them to grow. But I'm just taking piles out. And that's another tip I have. It can be overwhelming to say like, okay, I got to weed everything. And then as you're weeding, you're taking it to compost or, you know, when you're laying down mulch, you're weeding, you're putting down cardboard, then you're putting down your um, wood chips or something like that. Kind of do it in phases. So for weeding, I just go through and just yank everything out, make piles. When I have time to get to it, I get to it. It's not gonna hurt anything sitting there. When I put down mulch, I may layer this whole space in cardboard and then in a couple of days, I will get the mulch down. And the reason you do that is because you can accomplish a lot rather than just doing, you know, a small space, you get tired out, you come back, the weeds are back. Or you do a little bit of mulching here, you do it really well, but you don't get to the other end. Just do it in phases. Cardboard everything. Make it, like, make it look like cardboard carpet. And then over the week, put down your mulch. When you have weeds everywhere, just prune and weed, make piles come back to it later. The garden doesn't care if it looks messy. I want to just show you this before we get to the tomatoes. Well, I do have tomatoes in here. These are two uh, indeterminate tomatoes. This is the uh, Fantastico, I believe, in the 20-gallon root pouches that I sell. But these are carrots. This is a great plant. And if I get in there, 
you're gonna see all the bees and pollinators, predatory insects, good and bad. Like I think you see that. Look at all these. And you can look up to see what's good and bad, but I mean, good and bad insects are gonna show up in your garden. By planting carrots that are biennial, so first year you grow them to get the carrot root. If you leave them in the ground, they come back, they flower like this. And they just attract so much wildlife to your garden. It's pretty amazing. So if you have a space, carrots make a great plant to attract pollinators and stuff like that. Of course, they're going to bring in good and bad. You can't help that. But if you create a good balance of good and bad, the insects will take care of themselves. So we have a couple tomato plants here. I haven't gotten to pruning yet. These are cherry tomatoes going up. But I want to get into the area that I'm pruning. Now, first thing is, these plants really took off. So I pruned out that bottom part took all those leaves out and again that's just to get the airflow I have it mulched and you know in other videos I show you how to side dress people always ask me when do you side dress um, there's no set time so these plants are growing really well handful of the granular throw one down there throw one down there as it rains over the weeks and I water over the weeks that will feed the top roots I just threw some in. I don't need a schedule for that. Don't overdo it. You just scatter some in. Your plants will love you for it. I don't want you to overthink it that everything has to be scheduled. Now, for sprays, it's good to have a routine, but you can vary 7 to 10 days, 10 to 14 days. You just need to keep a routine so you don't forget, you know, or keep a plan in place so you don't forget. But you don't have to be exact. And these guys are all going to the posts. There's five posts. This is going to be a hedge too, a different one, um, bigger tomatoes. And then it's just going to be weaved through the wire and up the post. And I'm going to just try and make this a wall of tomatoes. Kind of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. If you notice a lack of a sound, the cicadas are finally dying off. This is my tournament tomato, the Big Zack, that I'm challenging a couple YouTubers. Um, I'll be doing a video on this, this time before I started talking about my secret setup and um, different things that I put in the soil that, you know, vary from what I typically do for other tomato plants. I want to let them grow a little bit, get some tomatoes on there. But I'm doing the Big Zac and I have a backup, the uh, Parks Whopper. And I'm sort of keeping these single stem, which means I'm removing a lot of the suckers, but I'm letting it you know, maybe branch out to two or three stems or something like that. I have no set way that I prune. The only thing that I want to do is get a gap of about 12 inches over the growth of the tomato plant so that soil doesn't splash up on air, we get airflow, and I like putting down mulch. You know, it works well. Here are four guys that are now uh, past waist high. That is the Parks Whopper, the smaller one I'm growing over there. And the tomatoes are coming in. And my pruning is more chaotic, rusted garden style. This is the Lemon Boy. Some beautiful tomatoes forming on there. This is the Supersonic, store-bought, nursery-bought, transplant. They're really, really taking off. When you're pruning and stuff like that, you want to make sure you keep enough leaves on top so that the sun doesn't pound down for hours onto your tomato plants or, your toma or onto your tomatoes or your tomatoes are going to get sun scald. And I might, these are growing really well. I'm going to walk back over here, grab a handful. I'm just using plant tone today. Any 555 NPK. I do like the Espoma products. 555 NP and K, up or down a few. Now, people also ask me a lot of times, well, when do you stop using nitrogen on your tomato plants? And just scattered it right in there. 
You don't want high nitrogen, like the miracle Grow or the chemical fertilizers, which are safe and fine to use in your garden, they have like a 24 nitrogen. If you keep watering your tomato plants with that, you get great green growth, but you get too many leaves. If you keep feeding them fish emulsion, which is a 511 NP and K, that five nitrogen isn't gonna make these grow crazy leaves. It will just keep them fed. So it's not so much about using nitrogen, it's about the quantity of nitrogen in your water soluble fertilizer. This fertilizer was like a, I think like a three, five, four, something like that, three nitrogen. Um, it's a slow release just slow and steady you know keep your NP and K around a 555 five, five, up or down a few and it's fine remember compost is well below a 111 NP and K the plants just need a steady supply then the next question I get is well why aren't you giving them more phosphorus potassium for more blooms um, and stuff like that I mean that does matter more so in my opinion for like roses and flowers than really your vegetables I'm not giving anything in my garden extra potassium right now. Well, sweet potatoes. But my peppers aren't getting anything extra right now. My tomatoes aren't getting anything extra right now. Meaning like a 10 phosphorus, 10 potassium or anything like that. As long as it's present in your soil, and I know I'm laboring this point, but I don't want you to spend tons of money on all these fancy fertilizers and, you know, add to your routine that nitrogen for two weeks and then phosphorus here, and you just don't need to do that. Slow and steady. I haven't found the need for more phosphorus and potassium at higher levels at any point with your tomato plants. If you take care of your soil, if you're using compost, it has everything it's, it needs. You're just using the granular fertilizer to boost it at certain points of growth. You're using the fish emulsion to help the plants establish and grow. But you don't have to worry about fertilizer from planting, you know, to the last day of frost and get overworked or get worked up over it. So in here, I have the cherry tomatoes. I just go through now and I cut leaves off the bottom. So I want that airflow and light to be able to go through there because it's going to get pretty uh, dark in here when all the leaves come up. So. I want the air to be able to flow and move. And all I'm doing now is taking a stem like this, gently pulling it through, and I let go, and I'm weaving it up the cattle panel. So far, so good. And you can just see all the flowers on there. I think those are grape tomatoes. This is the Juliet. I like the trusses on here. So I'm gonna have plenty of tomatoes. Side shot of the lemon boy. Mortgage lifter. Prune down, this is a single stem to here. But as it gets bigger, I let it go to three. One, two, three. And then I have those main stems growing up here. Somewhere on the line, so here's you know, let's just say number one, number two, another stem, number three, another stem, and here's number four, which means one of those three from the bottom has, you know, sent up another sucker that's turned into a production stem. And I'm going to let it go, you know, probably keep three or four moving along here. And then one thing that you can do is say you have too many stems. Let me grab these scissors. Say you just want to control the size or something like that. Rather than cut out, let's see, oh, I'll just do this one. Rather than cut out this whole production stem or the sucker out of a joint, right above where the flowers are, I'm going to leave one leaf. Well, let me <laughs> get this into frame. Right where the flowers are, I'm going to leave this leaf this leaf right here and I'm going to cut off the growing tip. So that will stop growing until it decides to send something out in this joint. But these tomatoes will develop, they will get protection from the leaves, and I've stopped the production stem from going and going for a while. And that's one way you can prune too, is you don't have to take the whole sucker or production stem out, you can just stop it and stop it where there's a flower cluster 
you'll get more tomatoes and you will prune and control the size of your plant. We'll also go over at the end of the video to um, my blueberries in places. I just want to show you the destruction the cicadas did. Kind of sad, but they were just ridiculous. I probably had them more or we had them more in my area than in some places. So I also like coming in to uh, prune in the morning, look around to, and I just kind of look under the leaves for different things. This is the Brandywine Yellow Potato Leaf. It's doing really well. And I don't see, well here, so right up there, Those are maybe aphids, but I'm looking for different problems. And a couple on the leaf I don't worry about. I won't start spraying, but I'm looking for just pests, diseases, and problems that are beyond just like a little bit damage here. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. I mean, who knows why that happened. But overall, they're green, they're healthy. I don't see any pests, I don't see any problems. So these are good to go. This is a Cherokee purple. I mean, look at all those tomatoes coming in there. The, the Rapunzel. Rapunzel is starting. This is a grape type. I mean, things are going really well. So when it comes to your tomato plants, my key is regular watering on the top. That's what's gonna get you great success with your tomato plants is knowing that you're watering regularly on the surface, getting all those surface roots, and that's part of why these tomatoes are doing so well. All right, let's go to another part of the garden. These are three indeterminate tomatoes that I'm growing in 100 gallon root pouches. I think three is about the right size because these are going to get big. Again, starting out as the single stem, letting it branch off a little bit, and I will just cut this to keep that gap again on the bottom keep some flow of air right in the middle but I will let these kind of grow out this way more and see what I can get if I have to top some of the production stems like I showed you I will do that you know maybe keep one or two going as they get bigger but you don't have to overthink it pruning is not a science you don't have to prune you know you just have to manage for pests and disease and if the plant stays healthy these indeterminates will keep going and going until a frost comes and takes care of them Right in there, that is a determinate bush variety, and that will naturally die off, so I don't do any pruning. No pruning for the determinate tomatoes, except for maybe some stuff down on the bottom. Prune as you wish for your indeterminate tomatoes, just so that they fit the space that you're growing in. Again, nothing fancy, don't overstress about it, just have fun with it. This is my dwarf tomato garden. The plant on the outside is a patio choice, um, it gets bigger, so right on the end I have the Patio Choice, one on the other side. But these are all different dwarf varieties in here. They get anywhere from six inches, like that, which I'm not sure the use of that type of plant, but I wanted to grow it. That's a micro tom. All the way up to 18 inches, you know, something like that. But I'm going to get tons of cherry-type tomatoes in here. The Patio Choice will really produce. Maybe I'll stake up this side. But you can use the determinate varieties, dwarf varieties in a small space and you'll get plenty of tomatoes. More tomatoes, I have nine of them growing along this fence line, all on T-posts. You can see that I've bottom pruned like I've been talking about. And maybe, I mean, just to keep in mind. So, well, number one, you've heard me talk about using alfalfa pellets. People were concerned that I wasn't using organic alfalfa pellets. They were concerned that it had weed killers in there, grazon maybe, I forget what they were saying. It doesn't affect your plants. It could be in there to some degree. Maybe the plants are sprayed, maybe they weren't. But I'm using it all over my tomato beds. None of the plants are showing any sign of damage from it. If you don't want to use alfalfa that's not stamped organic, you can buy organic. But part of the success of my tomatoes this year is that I put down a lot of alfalfa pellets, which have a natural growth horm hormone in it, at the end of the fall, a little bit in the spring, I'm using the grass clippings to keep the moisture in, watering regularly, I already talked about the surface, uh, surface roots um, enough, but keep the moisture in, 
prep your beds in the fall, slow and low and steady feeding will give you really, really healthy tomato plants. I am giving them an aspirin, um, an aspirin spray, really a, sp a sprinkle, I guess, because I'm using a watering can. But one or two aspirin in a gallon of water, once or twice a month, helps them stay strong, fight off diseases, because the, the aspirin mimics a hormone inside the plant that triggers an immune response. You can look it up, it's pretty cool and it's real. And it makes your leaves a little bit greener, a little more leathery and tough, I think, but it helps fight off disease. I have the homestead tomato there, which is a semi-determinant. This is a porter. This is chocolate stripes, a potato leaf. Let's see what else we have. This is the green zebra. This is going to get huge and it could use a little more trellising. That's a Bonnie's Best mortgage lifter. This was probably maybe the third round that I put in. That's why they're just starting to get tomatoes. But I like planting them in waves spaced out a couple of weeks um, just so that I'm not getting too many. Well, I'm going to get a ton of tomatoes at once. Who am I kidding? But part of the strategy would be is if you stagger them, you just don't get a ton of tomatoes at the same time. That's a golden jubilee, Arkansas traveler, and that's a big boy. That one actually went in when the other plants went in, and then the other eight went in later. But you can grow tomato plants in any kind of space. I highly recommend it. Don't over worry about having the perfect soil. You know, I'll be doing videos, if you're following me in the fall, to take care of um, prepping the soil in the fall so that you have great soil come the spring. And you just keep doing that over and over again and eventually you have outstanding soil. This is my beefsteak in uh, the metal container garden. And one plant can get you lots of tomatoes. So again, I started this with single stem. And you can see when you prune, the plant sends out new growth. So I could decide now to let this one grow. It'll grow into a production stem or I can remove it. But again, I want to keep that gap under there. But just look at all the tomatoes. And I'm, you know, pruning this again in a chaotic rusted garden style. Start out with a single stem. Now I have one, two, three, four production stems. And I will just keep moving them up this pole. When they get really big, I'll just start hacking out different pieces of the plant, keep the airflow going, make sure I got flowers coming, and it will do fine. The whole goal is just to keep it off the ground. And this one, I've never actually grown a tomato this way. This all came out of sort of an accident in the sense that this was going to be for cucumbers. I got to get in there, prune out that bottom. You can see all those leaves get beat up too. They've got some marks on them and stuff. Just clear them out. But I am just weaving this tomato plant. It seeded itself from last year. And I'm just weaving it through the cattle panel. I already did it earlier, so there's not much more for me to do. But this is going to be a big U wall of one tomato plant, which I think will be pretty cool. But I decided to not put cucumbers in here, let this tomato plant grow, and it looks pretty healthy. Like you'll see something like this down at the bottom. That's just a weak, beat-up leaf. You don't need to worry about that. Prune it out, feed it, water it. The leaves will strengthen up, the plant will be healthy, and it'll be able to fight off whatever problem it had down there. All right, let's see, uh, go look at the damage from the cicadas. So anything that is dying and drying up, that's cicada damage. They actually took out anything that had a somewhat woody stem and we had we probably had like 10,000 here it was just crazy a crazy amount so they've killed off a lot of my plants these are um, muscadine kind of like grapes they'll survive they'll be okay but I lost so many blueberries that problem I was having before which looked just like that that was from the cicadas and they just cut so many egg slits into the stems that the plants are dying out so I've lost really two years worth of growth. You can see all the damage on the blueberries over there. The bigger ones seem to be okay, however, die off. And this is what happens, is everything where these great blueberries were starting, they're dead. So what I'm gonna do, 
is I'll take this opportunity to kind of redesign this space. The blueberries will stay, probably do something down the middle, do a super feeding for the blueberries, get new leaf growth going, get them strong, strengthen them up so next year they come back with the force. Even my blackberries, same thing is happening. You can see all of these snapped off and all these slits that are in there are from the cicadas and if it's not strong enough they break just like that all these slits so blackberries are no good well on that part and i'm also decided to leave the blackberries that have the roots that have reached out over this way and are growing and i'll move these next year into the space behind me i think we'll finish up down here don't know why that blue bucket's laying in there but the corn it's chest high it's not even 4th of July, so it's doing pretty good. I need to cage that in. Although the squirrel population is really down. I'm not seeing that many of them. So, I know this was predominantly about the tomato plants, but this is yellow squash, straight neck. That one got pollinated, it's doing well. The plant is huge, that's one plant right here. That's the dark green zucchini in there, doing well. I'll be managing these, just two plants, plenty for two people, family of four, space in the rest of my garden. You know, there's a lot of ways that I talk about how to take care of this plant from the vine borer and different things, but the best thing you can do, and I'll cut over and show it to you uh, right, well, right now. I wanted to just cut in and show you one of the things that I'm doing to really manage cucumber problems and zucchini problems. These are my backup plants really over there that's all that's I think six different kind of basil that's for another video but I have cucumbers coming up I'll have green zucchini um, the dark green zucchini I'll have yellow squash some other things growing in there but one of the strategies too is even though my zucchini plants and squash plants look great I'll take care of them eventually they're going to get beat up and weak rather than struggle with the dying plant these transplants will be ready I will also start more transplants just like this in about three weeks and you know, if I don't need them, that's great. I'll give some of them away, tuck them in different places, but it's a great way to keep production going in your garden. Just have your backups. So having those backups is a great way to keep that production going in your garden. These get beat up, the vine bar kill, kills them off. You have transplants ready to go. Start growing transplants again when you put them in. You know, you don't have to do many, three or four, something like that. But you can keep putting these in because they grow quickly from a transplant to producing could be 30 to 40 days. And if you do that in August 1st, you're still going to have squash and zucchini coming in in September. If you're looking for those two and a half inch pots, um, you can't find them. I do sell them at my seed shop. We sell a kit just for that purpose. But you could use yogurt containers, anything that has some size to it so that the root system doesn't get bound and they can grow a little bit. Thanks for watching. Um, please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and enjoy your weekend.